A brief trip into the future with inventor Maxwell Chikumbuto. He's claiming a scientific breakthrough with this green energy technology, an electric car which he says converts radio frequencies into energy. At the powertrain, we did it in house, uh, which makes it the, fair, the first electric vehicle in the world that drives without needing recharging systems. On the greener power off grid machine, it's very unique for the first time. Uh, energy is being generated uh, using a radio frequency and without moving paths. Chikumbutso is not the typical scientist. He dropped out of school aged 14 and says he's developed his blueprints through research and visions from God. A showroom in Harare showcases his prototypes. A helicopter that operates using any one of the five fuels including paraffin, a drone and a household transformer that he says can multiply power a hundredfold. But he says breaking his disruptive technology into the world has not been easy. He's failed to patent his work. That's why we end up finding nuclear scientists, electromagnetic professors, so that they can assist us on the patent process. But as you are aware that um, in patents, anything that violates the laws of physics is not an industrial applicable solution. They classify it as a perpetual motion device. Luis Kupenala, a South African-based Angolan businessman, has poured millions into the project, but now believes it's time to commercialize. He says the Angolan government and a Brazil private energy player have signed up to buy some of their products, but that other investors don't generally believe anything credible can come out of Africa. We just sell from our skin color. We don't believe on ourselves. But obviously a, a new generation has another responsibility to change this kind of paradigm to another level whereby we have to capitalize on our abilities in Africa. Zimbabwean scientists who spoke to the SABC also expressed skepticism, but Chikumbutso brushes the naysayers aside. He says he's determined to ensure that his God-given gift brings energy to light up the continent and put Zimbabwe on the technological map. Shingai Nyoka, SABC News, Harare, Zimbabwe. The president, Comrade Emerson Dambuzom Nangagwa, is soon to launch two cars and a motorbike made by a Zimbabwean inventor, Songolani, Chikumbuzo. Chikumbuzo, a 44-year-old man, a resident of Zuarese in Arare, dropped from school when he was informed to, due to financial constraints. He started his journey of making gadgets in the late 1990s, making a radio transmitter, digital navigator, turbine engine using scrap metal. And in 2009, he began his journey into green energy. Hear him explain it to the president, Comrade Emerson Dabuz of Nagagwa at State House. No fuel, nothing. Nothing, no fuel. First in the world. The first in the world. This is power from the sky. Yeah, from the radio frequency. This one you have in Zimbabwe. Yes, we have done it in Zimbabwe. Can you explain? Yeah. So the vehicle it is bought with what we call a microsonic energy device that is being after our own storage. Yeah, the, 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 the vehicle it uses what we call the microsonic energy device. The microsonic energy device it is the the device that I personally invented in 2009, which harness radio frequencies, convert it into energy. As you know, radio frequencies they are measured in nano volts, meaning to say they are less than a volt, they are just like nothing. But we find a way of harnessing it through the, the, the creation of the 70% of the components in the microsonic energy, which I tell me to have designed. So those are the components that, that, that enable the, the radio frequency to be transferred into pure, useful energy. And this is the first time in the world with that technology, it violates uh, the laws of energy in, thermo in, in thermodynamics and also the first law of energy as well. So they wanted to arrest him for changing physics? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Even when we tried to file a patent, they said we were violating the natural laws of physics. Mm. So it's not an industrial applicable. We decided to take the trade secret route after that. So with this car, you can also use it to power your house. It is a moving generator. When you drive from work uh, back to your home, you can connect your power cable, then you can power your house. It, is, it gives you 15 kilowatts uh, 
power to power your house and the vehicle itself which has got 160 kilowatts electric motor which gives you a torque of about 300 uh, 320 to 380 newton meters of torque that means it's, it's fast and um, we are talking of a um, horsepower of around 215 horsepower so when we compare this car with the with the same cars of of this model like the Toyota, the Toyota um, Eben Cruiser you will see that this is um, efficient in everything when you talk of load our car doesn't weigh much it weighs 1405 kgs only when you talk of an Eben Cruiser you are talking of about 1800 so that means you can carry extra baggage in the vehicle top speed is 220 kilometers per hour yeah which is fast it has got two driving modes we have got the sport mode which will give you 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in around two seconds that is very very powerful then we have got what we call a normal driving mode when you want to drive like in town you can select that one so that it, it won't give you a, a lot of torque chukumbo also talks about his journey to Silicon Valley in the United States of America, where he was poisoned together with his partner, who passed on for defying the laws of physics. We were poisoned at that time. Dr. Teddy didn't make it. He died in January 2017. I survived by the grace of God. Uh, so I was always in Zimbabwe and United States of America until he heard about myself. Then he invited me. The president. He, he, the president, yes. Then he invited me. To, to, to come back and put my base in Zimbabwe. So right now I'm based in Zimbabwe. Best advantage, the, the driving range is unlimited. I charge this way, I sweep my gates, Kungura Mamki driver for the next 20 years. And the motor car is a true tower, the upper market, the same from 2015 we have been working hard, testing it, homologations, CBCA certifications, ISO certifications, FCC standards, just at Anazo. Sagaya road with, even when it came to Zimbabwe, it went through VAD. Sagaya motkari akum from it to Wafumba road. You are the inventor. Yeah, I'm the one who invented the technology. President Munangagwa says he called him back home to do his work here in Zimbabwe and is happy to grace the occasion when the vehicles are launched. Is there any other vehicle in the world? Uh, with this technology, you know, this is the first vehicle in the world. Where is it? Here yeah, in Zimbabwe. This is my only vehicle. It's about in 3 million. Stay there. I said, let me eat that 3 million. <laughs> Come here, eat something. <laughs> this is it. But it's, it's more great than engineers. Yeah, 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 all this thing from time we began doing these things have been supporting me. Yes. Throughout. Yeah, he was making television at my house. And they can have a television and there's no wire. We can listen to all stations which we want on Tamak. This is what you call it. Um, so from the drone. 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 Yeah. Since we make a drone. So you made one. This is about two years ago. Yes, yes. We need a drone. Yeah, you can make a drone from here. Just put up wires together and put something around it. You can fly to Cape Town and call it back. This is the only vehicle that exists in the world. There is no other in the world. This is the only vehicle in the world and it is here in Zimbabwe by this young Zimbabwe. And he's so gifted, you won't believe it. When he first came to uh, talk to me, I, I thought he had some didn't they hold the wires? <laughs> it, but I now know that it's well connected, well connected. To the layman, these two vehicles which were brought to stake the house in a motorcycle use radio frequencies that powers these vehicles. No electricity, no liquid fuels, and they are silent when traveling, clocking a speedy of up to over 220 kilometers per hour and have all the trappings of modern vehicles. The current vehicles were assembled in China using Chikumbuso's powertrain of radio frequencies. If it fully produced, the vehicles could cut Zimbabwe's fuel import and Sungulani suspects that the oil and vehicle manufacturers in the United States could have had a hand in his poisoning. 
Soon Zimbabwe will launch to the world what her young minds can do for the country and humanity, said the president. Ruben Barwez, ZBC News, Status Harare. What if I told you there's a car that never needs fuel, never needs charging, and never stops running, and it was invented by a man from Zimbabwe? Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, it's not. Maxwell Chikumbutso, a self-taught inventor, has done what the biggest car companies in the world couldn't. He built an electric car that powers itself. No plugs, no petrol stations, no range anxiety. Just endless, clean motion. But here's the twist. This revolutionary technology isn't being celebrated in Africa. It's being embraced by America and China. And that, my friends, is where the real story begins. Maxwell Chikumbutso's journey is not your typical tech founder fairy tale. He didn't graduate from MIT. He didn't have billionaire investors throwing money at him. In fact, he barely finished high school. Growing up in a rough neighborhood in Zimbabwe, Maxwell's passion for electronics began with broken radios and TVs. By the time he was in his 20s, he was already building his own gadgets, many of them ahead of their time. But the invention that really made the world sit up was his self-charging electric car. It's powered by a generator system called Greener Power Machine, or GPM, which he also invented. Using radio frequencies and electromagnetic technology, GPM creates power continuously while the car is running. No external input, no emissions, just pure innovation. In theory, and in practice, this car never needs to stop to refuel or recharge. So how does it work? That's the million-dollar question. The science behind it is complicated, and skeptics have demanded proof. But Chikumbutso didn't just talk, he demonstrated it. The car ran, it moved, it worked. Independent engineers, including some from the US, were stunned. What they saw defied what they'd been taught. A closed-loop energy system that actually functions. It's supposed to be impossible. Yet there it was. Now, you'd think Africa would have wrapped this man in gold, right? Wrong. Instead of getting government support, corporate backing, or even community protection, Maxwell faced roadblocks, suspicion, and in some cases, outright sabotage. Zimbabwe, and much of the African continent, simply wasn't ready. Some say it was politics. Others say it was jealousy. Some believe it was fear. But the bottom line is, he had to take his genius elsewhere. And so, Chikumbutso packed up his invention and flew to the United States, where interest in his technology exploded almost immediately. Tech companies and government agencies wanted to talk. Some wanted to buy, others wanted to license. He got invitations to China too, where innovation is funded aggressively and without hesitation. Suddenly, the Zimbabwean genius who couldn't get a meeting in Harare was getting red carpet treatment in Silicon Valley and Shenzhen. Now let's pause for a second. This isn't just a story about one man and his electric car. This is about brain drain. This is about Africa losing its brightest minds to countries that didn't raise them, didn't educate them, didn't invest in them, but are more than happy to profit from their brilliance. It's a pattern we've seen too often. The resources leave, the talent leaves, the wealth leaves, and the continent stays poor. Imagine what it would mean if Chikumbutso's car launched in Africa first. Imagine factories in Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Ghana, building cars that never need gas, reducing pollution, saving billions in fuel imports. Imagine African cities leading the green revolution instead of following it. But instead, we watch from the sidelines as our own people put foreign countries ahead in the race for the future. And this isn't just about cars. Chikumbutso also developed a helicopter, a drone, a mobile backpack power station, and even a TV that runs without being plugged in. Yes, you heard that right a wireless television that powers itself. He has multiple patents. But again, where is the African investment? Where are the African universities researching his work? Where are the African governments fighting to keep him? It's easy to blame the West for taking advantage, but the real question is, why do we keep giving them the chance? Why are we making it so easy for them to lure away our visionaries? And why is it so hard for a genius like Maxwell Chikumbutso to feel at home in the very continent that shaped him? Part of the answer lies in the mindset. In many African countries, inventors are still treated with suspicion. People expect them to be backed by some foreigner or NGO to be taken seriously. Institutions are slow to believe. Governments are slow to act. 
Meanwhile, bureaucracy and corruption choke innovation before it can take root. And while we wait for approvals and clearances, the world moves on, without us. But it doesn't have to be this way. Africa has the minds, it has the problems to solve, and it has the opportunity to leapfrog past outdated technologies. What we lack is the courage to invest in ourselves. Chikumbutso's story should be a wake-up call. Not just to leaders, but to the youth watching this video. To the dreamers, the engineers, the coders, the builders, your ideas matter, but if we don't protect and support them here, they will find a home elsewhere. Now imagine a future where Africa becomes the launchpad for world-changing innovation. Where kids in Nairobi grow up inspired by homegrown heroes, not foreign brands. Where countries compete not just in football, but in patents, in inventions, in Nobel Prizes. That future starts by backing our people, before the rest of the world does. Maxwell Chikumbutso should have been Africa's Tesla. And he still could be. But only if we, as a continent, decide that our geniuses deserve more than applause. They deserve platforms, funding, protection, recognition, because the next world-changing idea may already exist in someone's garage, in Lagos, in Kampala, in Bulawayo. The question is, will we help them build it, or will we let the world take it from us once again? So the next time someone tells you Africa needs help, remember, Africa doesn't lack brilliance. It lacks belief in its own. And the day we change that, is the day we stop being a continent of lost potential and start becoming a continent of unstoppable power.